guys, Rex here. So we are trying out the Zero Tech. This is the Trace rifle scope. I believe it's their advanced. This one is a non-illuminated model. Um, the illuminated model is quite a bit wider. Um, illumination is great to have, but this is the one I got. Um, this is in a mil mil configuration, 4.5 power, all the way up to 27 power. 30 millimeter main tube, 50 millimeter objective lens. Uh, these are pretty popular from what I've heard in Australia. So I haven't seen a lot of these like in gun stores in the United States. You can get these like at opticsplanet.com is uh, where I got this one. And um, they're supposedly built to the Australian standards for ruggedness and stuff in the outback. I think a lot of the long range precision guys out there like these a lot. They, they got a good reputation. Um, it has kind of different style styling and we're gonna see in the United States, of course, this is made in Asia. So this is actually a Chinese scope here made in China. But uh, the turrets you can see have kind of a fluted design. They're uh, in a very aggressive gear type pattern. It's not even really a knurling, I wouldn't call it, but a gear type look on the top. Um, and then the knurling on the side. So it's kind of more of a smooth feel than what you might be used to. Uh, most American scopes have an aggressive knurling type deal. Now there's advantages to this as well as disadvantages. I mean, it's not gonna be as easy to get a grip on if it's in a slippery environment. However, that can be good if you're moving around because, you know, this would have to really catch on something. Sometimes if you have very aggressive rubberized grip texture on the turrets, it'll slip easier. This is gonna uh, glide past, uh, if you pull it out of the bag or if you're wearing it on a, a sling, it's gonna glide past the material you're wearing a lot better. Uh, than some of that other stuff that might be the design there. Here we do have a knurling uh, pattern on the diopter adjustment here. The diopter was able to be set very easily. The parallax goes uh, below 25 meters all the way up to infinity. And it seems like a decent, tight, smooth operation. This thing does have zero stops. It's your standard typical. It has a drum design underneath here. There's a little pin that indexes on another pin on the drum. So you simply put that on the other side so that when you're coming back down, it, it touches that. Uh, you can set it however you want, so it's very flexible. The wrench for the inner zero stop drum is the same wrench uh, being used on the turrets and that's included here with the rifle. It also has some extra screws, um, uh, set screws that, that are very commonly lost. So that's like a really good thing to have. I would tape this onto the rifle or keep it with my kit for sure uh, because you never know what's going to happen. It comes with very nice, nicely made aluminum flip up caps. They have two little clasps that uh, snap in pretty nice and firm. It's very low profile. It doesn't protrude out so it's a smooth deal across the scope tube. Um, likewise in the back here. There's little plastic inserts that these snap into. I actually broke the one insert on this side within the first few minutes, uh, playing with it and, and screwing around with it like I do when I start uh, using it. I think that now that I uh, have more experience on the scope, I'd know to be more careful with that and not break it. We have this nestled, of course, on my old 308 test rifle. This is just a Remington AAC factory barrel. Um, it's been true, the action's been true. Uh, it's a good shooting rifle. It's in a McMillan A5 stock, uh, bedded and Badger hardware, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, Badger M40A3 rings, um, very good rings for this kind of application. Pretty heavy, but also very heavy duty and very solid. So I like that part, okay? Um, let's uh, get to the performance of the optic here so far. Now, I like the reticle design. I got a real good view of the Mirage. Excellent view of the Mirage just on 18 power here. Crank it up to 27. I'm gonna tweak this a little bit see if i can sharpen stuff up i'm having no problem seeing all my bullet holes down there at 100 when i'm on 27 power the aiming dot if i can get steady enough here let me measure that the center aiming dot can easily fit inside my 30 caliber hole so it's a very small aiming dot a fraction the size of the actual diameter of the bullet at 100 yards. So for target shooting applications, very good. And of course this rifle shoots like incredibly well. I'm shooting right now, what is this? What is this stuff? PPU, match ammo. And it's like 
about three quarter or half minute of angle performance right now, five shots so far. Um, and this rifle barrel has been sitting for a while, so it's kind of corroded. Um, and I didn't do any kind of fancy cleaning. I, is, I just took it off the rack, haven't shot this in a long time. So I put the scope on here and it's still shooting like a champ. Um, the aiming dot, the center aiming dot is great. Then you have a, a, ra a rather thick stadia line coming off the top and the sides and the bottom. And we have a grid pattern with little plus signs or little crosshairs every mil, which are thin enough. I crank it back down to 10 power. You can still see them pretty well, but they're very fine and they're definitely not in the way of your view. It's a nicely balanced reticle, the way the, the lines are um, designed. You know, the thickness of the lines is very nice to kind of see for, for target shooting or precision shooting applications. When I come all the way down to 4.5 power, um, we do have kind of a duplex design of very thick stadia lines coming up until you get into the pattern of the reticle, which goes out 10 mils in each direction. So once you get past 10 mils uh, up, down, left, and right, we have a thick uh, stadia line, which is nice because the reticle is, the center portion of the reticle is very, very thin and precise, but when you're on low power, you're going to want to be able to find stuff, right? So that actually works pretty well. If I'm aiming in high contrast areas, transition areas like the trees in the grass back here, um, it's easy to get lost. It's easy to lose a reticle at four and a half power, but on the grass, it's very easy to pick up. So I'm going to crank it up a little bit to 10 power. That's the power that I would typically use probably the most for what I do for my context. And uh, the reticle is, again, thick enough. You still can see the duplex portion pretty well um, around all, all the sides here. Um, we do have marks all the way up from the center aiming portion up 10 mils. And each mil is very evenly marked. The thing I like about this reticle, it's extremely easy to translate. It's not confusing at all. Like I didn't look at the instructions, I looked at it and within one second I knew exactly what was going on. Uh, everything is, the plus signs are obviously one mil marks. You have uh, the, the odd numbers on the left side labeling your grid pattern and on the right side you have the even numbers. So there's not any of the stuff that is not labeled so you can very easily reference exactly where you're at without question um, and it's not crowded and it's very nice and symmetrical and even because it's kind of the staggered numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, going all the way down the spine of the reticle. Uh, likewise, going off left and right, you have your uh, even numbers labeled. And so it's very easy to see exactly what you're doing. Now on the top, it's not labeled, but that's okay. That's not going to be used for that. You want to keep that as clean as possible so you can see your bullet trace uh, ascending on the ascending leg so you can catch that on its way back down in the target maybe. Um, but a lot of times if uh, you control your recoil effectively, you can catch that bullet on the way up through it's the ascending leg because it's headed straight away from you. It's relatively flat. It's, the vertical velocity is not too much to pick up with the eye and it's closer during the ascending leg. So it's nice to have um, a nice clear view kind of above that. Um, now, if you kind of free recoil on a large caliber, you're going to recoil up to where that grid pattern gets in the way. But honestly, with this grid pattern, I haven't had any problem with that obstructing the view of seeing the bullet. Now, I got, like I said, today is perfect day for bullet trace and mirage. I can see very, very well. The reticle is nice. I, if I was going to design a reticle for you guys, it'd be very close to that. I mean, I don't know what I would change. It's, it's not fancy, but it's simple and it's effective. There's not like a lot of gimmicky stuff on there. We do have 10th mil marks um, on, in between four and five mils. On the downside, it's just a very simple grin pattern. I like that. Um, we also have half mil dots between the plus signs or the, the crosshairs. So you can know exactly where half a mil is. And that's gonna just be a reference point. It's not too crowded, I don't think. For my application, again, there's different preferences based on different experience and different applications, right guys? But for what I'm doing, I like the reticle. I think it's cool. Uh, overall construction, the scope seems like it's, uh, you know, pretty typical in this price range. I think they're around a grand. Seems like it's pretty nice for a grand. I don't think that's a terrible deal for price. There are some nice features on it that are classy, like these lens caps are pretty classy. The way they, they fit built-in lens caps is pretty cool. The zero stop, I like the lockable turrets where you have to pull it up. I like this style of zero stop. It's very easy to figure out. 
and is very, it's kind of universal design you're going to see in a lot of different stuff, Japanese and Chinese designs. Uh, so the zero stop is not like strange or confusing um, if you've done this before. If you haven't done it before, read the instructions on how to do that. I'll show you how to do this in a minute. But um, yeah, everything's pretty straightforward, man. Uh, seems like a nice scope. The 27 power is usable in the bright daylight. Um, you have to you have to get everything focused in just right, of course, to use it effectively. But I'm going to crank her up to infinity here. I got such heavy mirage, I'm not picking up these trees at 800 all that well because of the mirage. I'm looking towards the top, trying to get a good idea of how clear this is. I mean, I can see the leaves sort of on the trees out there at 800, but um, heavy mirage today. Okay, guys. We're looking at the truth box here and the reticle is exactly on cue vertically going down the drop portion of the spine the reticle all of our mill marks are exactly on point very nicely done Going left and right. It's right on the money. I mean, I can't discern, I can't discern any error there. I'm gonna crank it up a bit more. We are on 18 power now. Man, I got a nice, beautiful, crisp view at 25, which is nice for doing stuff like this. And that's exactly right on. Let's see what we can read, see what kind of resolution we got through this glass here. Now it gets a bit darker once you get all the way up to 27 power. It brightens up a bit, even backing off to 18 power. So, depending on Mirage, because we have a little Mirage out here, even at 25 meters, I am getting 1.4 cycles per millimeter on the T21. It's a 4-inch T21 at 25 meters, which is pretty good. We're at 27 power here. Yeah, I got decent Mirage. Of course, that's going to Put a margin of error in the observation. You can't just do it one time. You have to do it during an, uh, a variety of environmental conditions because we are looking through the atmosphere when we're looking through optics, right guys? So the testing, but that corroborates with what I've observed earlier. It's usually about 1.4 cycles per millimeter, maybe one notch less than that. It's good though, nice and clear. And we'll do some more low light testing here. And when I was doing low light testing, I was keeping up with other main name brands in the same price range. And when we come back to four and a half power, still got an, a very nice clear view. That's one thing with methods and materials for doing this kind of uh, testing is you have to realize all the different, you know, factors in the atmospheric. So the base science is very important. Uh, you can't just go out and do a test one time and then think you got the numbers right. Those numbers will vary incredibly based on exactly what angle the sun is, what kind of mirage you have, what kind of moisture you have, in, you know, that day. Because all this can affect uh, the way the light is reflecting off that target and passing through the air until you see it, right? Um, also the color of the ground can make a big difference. Right now we're looking across a rather wet driveway that's uh, darker in color than normal. Um, the grass is uh, greened up again because we had some rain last night. Um, but if it was brighter out, it would give you different numbers. It actually will. Um, I've, I've done this a lot. Um, if there was a different temperature, if there was different thermal difference between the ground and the atmosphere at this level I'm looking at, you would have a different amount of mirage. And usually the mirage is what washes it out. Even 
during a close test. Guys ask why I don't do this farther. I've done it farther. It's not as good when you get too far though because now your atmospherics are not as much of a constant. You're trying to eliminate variables when you're doing tests like this. So that's a big part. Some folks I don't think understand, oh, farther is better, Rex. Eh. Not if you're trying to eliminate atmospheric conditions so you can do comparative analysis, right? And quantify that. I explain the methods and materials very thoroughly on my Patreon channel. Um, if you sign up for the VSL tier, you have access to everything. But if you, even on the expert tier, I think I put the methods and materials there too, um, where I go through a very, very comprehensive kind of walkthrough on how I develop an opinion based on facts and not emotions or not brand loyalty. I just look at the numbers, man. Like whatever the number is, is what the number is. And you gotta be, you gotta be fair with everything, but you also gotta have sound methods and materials if you're gonna uh, stand on those facts, right? You can't just do it one time and think you got the right numbers. You have to do it in a, a variety of atmospheric contexts and lighting conditions, okay? We even measure the light when we do our low light testing. Like we see how many lux there is so that we can log that so when we're comparing with results against other models, we can say, okay, well, this had totally different illumination. And that'll vary between winter and summer. If there's snow on the ground, whole different deal, completely different deal, right? If you're doing it from a porch or if you're doing it from the inside of a building, looking out a window, huge atmospheric effects that can totally change your numbers. So we go over that in the uh, Patreon channel talking about methods and materials. But overall, looking at the scope, it's nice. Um, it functions. It's repeatable so far. I don't got a lot of rounds through it, but uh, I mean, like from what I've seen, it, it uh, matches with what I've heard about them. Um, you know, maybe I seen one or two of these at a class, but I don't remember. If I did see one, I don't remember it. So it's nice to actually have one in. Thanks for, uh, to Optics Planet for uh, carrying this kind of stuff that you wouldn't see other places. It's cool to be able to actually see what they use over there in Australia more and uh, have a little bit of a taste of it. But it's a decent scope. I like it's kind of a gentleman's scope, in my opinion. It's classy. It's got some classy features. Uh, ruggedness and stuff. I mean, it's a fragile instrument. It's a precision rifle scope. I would say um, the center of gravity for applications that this scope would be perfect for is target shooting. Uh, daytime varmint shooting. If you're going to shoot gophers or prairie dogs, I don't know if you guys have done that. This would be very nice for that or any kind of, you know, target shooting during the daytime. Very nice. Now, if you get the illuminated model, it would probably be very good in the night too. I don't know how uh, the reticle would illuminate on the illuminated model, how that, you know, that can make a difference a little bit, but um, seems like a good scope. It's, it's good quality glass. Is very, very comparable to other stuff in that $1,000 price range that you're going to find made in a similar area in China, right? Um, you know, from other brands. A lot of this stuff is made in the same factories, same parts, just kind of reconfigured and rebranded. But it's these guys, I think, selected the right features and had the right quality control measures. They did a good job uh, calibrating that reticle, too. Um, a lot of times you'll see they're off. Somebody checked. I appreciate it when people check. I hate to find out the expensive way by wasting too much ammo. Uh, hopefully this review kind of gives you a better look at what this scope is. Do it? Does it have my stamp of approval? I, I don't know if you're doing that target shooting application stuff like I do. I think this would work. I'm going to use it for a little while and see how I like it. Um, it'll definitely find a home on one of the rings we got around here. But if you like it, subscribe to the channel. Uh, thumbs up, share it with your buddies or whatever. That's cool. Uh, we have all kinds of other stuff on the channel and a lot more on Patreon. Thanks for watching, guys. Rex out.
This one's mine. It's fine. Don't worry about it.